happy Wednesday. I have taken the day off and I have gone to get myself some coffee. I am about to get my lunch. I am waiting in the parking lot at the restaurant and I will talk about good guys, good guys? No, there's no guys here, it's girls. Good girls guide to murder. Morning show, all the way live from Chicago. Weekday morning from six till 10, only on 1043 Jam. Can I have a small iced coffee, cream and sugar, and can I have a butter pecan flavor? Okay. That's all. All right. Hi, hello. I am Dawn, and it is a new week for the book vlog, uh, my reading vlog, which I do at work because I am a librarian, and it's probably more interesting for you to see what a full-time librarian does. Email. I'm a teen librarian at a public library in Illinois and today is Tuesday. Sorry, sometimes it's, it's almost summer reading so sometimes teens trickle in to register for summer reading. It is Tuesday, yesterday was Memorial Day and so I'm starting my week off on a Tuesday and today I'm doing some take it makes today and I'm going to be laser cutting laser cuttering laser cutting the project which is a bird feeder I will be listening to the Christie affair the Christie project it's not the Mindy project claim it I love when I come prepared to these vlogs it's my favorite looking on goodreads the Christie affair it is the Christie affair I will be listening to the Christie affair this week and I will be reading at home this week, Good Girl's Guide to Murder. And it better be good because all I freaking hear about is Good Girl's Guide to Murder, Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I like a good murder. So I'm hoping that that's good. I am the criticizer of books. I do not have high hopes, but we'll see. All right, let's get our workday started. Found the one you should never give her up. I think it's the way life changes when in love, yeah. I surround my soul with the positivity. That's why I don't worry about the things that I don't see, yeah. These days I don't worry about much. I think we should have some more fun. I still dream about the days when we were young. I'll take a hit and still finish and run, yeah, yeah. I'm about a quarter of the way through the Christie affair and I have read a couple of Agatha Christie have I read them I think I've read and then there were none but I have seen Orient Express and then there were none so that's the extent of my knowledge of her literarily I was aware that she went missing. Um, I guess I need to say what this book is about. Okay, so The Christie Affair is about the 11 days that Agatha Christie went missing, but is told from the perspective of her ex, of her husband's mistress, which is an interesting idea. I knew none of this going in. I do not read synopses when I read, when I decide to read a book. Uh, so I knew nothing going in. However, I was aware that she did disappear for 11 days, but that's because of the episode of Doctor Who. Not because of a school project or general interest in Agatha Christie. Okay, so the premise is quite intriguing. We are getting the perspective from the mistress, the other woman. The idea is pretty solid because, you know, we're getting a backstory of the other woman through her own eyes. Of course, us as the reader, we are like, ew, she's a skanky hoe. We should not like her, but of course, the book is trying to make her a sympathetic person by humanizing her, which I have no problem with. And, you know, I, 
I find it interesting to get the perspective of the other woman. I don't know, man. Something is missing from this book. Something's missing. There's not enough story. My problem is that there's a lot of backstory of Nan like running in the fields and playing with the doggy and and I'm like, what does this have to do with anything? This book is only 350 pages. So for me, I feel like everything needs to have a purpose. Every little thing you put in this story needs to drive the plot or it needs to add something very specific to the character. And running in the fields really isn't. It's really not doing anything. So I can tell that this author has good intentions. She has a solid idea, but it's not as critical as it could be. And I'm a little bummed by that, not gonna lie. Because I have said this before, and I need to put it on a t-shirt. When I read an adult book, I expect to be dazzled. Just saying. Okay, I am about halfway through the Christie affair. It is hot. Ooh, windows down. All this down. The point of all of the backstory is to make her sympathetic because she is kind of an unapologetic mistress. She does not care about Agatha Christie. She does not care that she's taken her husband, taken her husband. She hasn't taken him. He left. He's an asshole. She doesn't care. She has got her own motives for what she's doing and on the surface she's not really a sympathetic character so the point of the backstory is to make her sympathetic however it's not doing a really good job of that and by that I don't mean it's not making her sympathetic I mean it's boring it, it's not interesting her backstory isn't sad enough or devastating enough or deep enough or inspirational enough or anything enough for me to really care about her and it's supposed to make me care it's not doing a good job because I don't so I know the story is about Nan and we're seeing all of this including Agatha's disappearance through her eyes but I'm much more interested in Agatha's disappearance and not Nan and it's not even on the page her disappearance is really not on the page it's just like Day four of her disappearance. Nan, 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 nan. Day five of her disappearance. Nan, 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 nan. Let's say it's not about her disappearance. It's just about Nan, which it should be. But because Nan, 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 nan is kind of booty, I don't care. I'm much, I'm much more interested in Agatha. And what, what, what was she doing? Too far away from our hearts, yeah, yeah. The ones we keep close, we should never let go. So tell me who you love, baby. Happy Wednesday. I have taken the day off and I have gone to get myself some coffee. I am about to get my lunch. I am waiting in the parking lot at the restaurant. And I will talk about good guys. Good guys? No, there's no guys here. It's girls. Good girls guide to murder have to say I like it so far it won't be a five because I'm very selective with my fives I'm one of those people who don't give out fives but I really don't like the last five I gave was spring of 2020 and that was the fifth season by N.K. Jemison. I really don't give out fives I've given some four and a halves I will give a four and a half but I very rarely give out a five anyway uh, Good Girl's Guide to Murder is not what I was expecting it to be. I didn't really know what to expect, but it has a really high rating. So I'm like, okay, it's probably going to be similar to Truly Devious. I liked Truly Devious and it's similar in writing style, not story. If you don't know, it's basically about a girl who is a senior in high school. She has decided to do her senior thesis they kind of have like a senior thesis thing at their high school she has decided to do her paper on a local girl who disappeared in her town five years prior 
I so far I like our main character Pippa I remember her name right now I'm really really bad I remember characters names but I know it now it's Pippa I like her a lot I like her friends uh I like I like murder mysteries where the author gives you clues and you are you as the reader are kind of expected to solve the mystery along with the main character I really do like that and so I'm paying attention I already have some theories um right now I think they've given us two red herrings though but clearly it's not the person who everyone thinks it is who's been convicted of it obviously hey, not. it's thursday and yes i'm wearing the same shirt that i wore yesterday because i didn't go to work yesterday and i'm not gonna dirty up shirt so there's that i'm about to go to work it is eight something in the morning and before i go to work i did want to address something important good girl's guide to murder i have a guess i have a guess i am on page 130 and i have a guess i'm not gonna call it a prediction or like a theory or anything because I don't really have any evidence to prove said guess. I'm just going off a hunch. And by hunch, I mean I am an avid watcher of true crime. Therefore, that makes me a qualified detective. And because of my impeccable qualifications, I am going to give my prediction. Now, if you have not read the book and you don't want to know what my prediction is because all this stuff is going to be spoiler-ish, I am going to hold up the book while I talk spoiler stuff. So if the book is up in screen, that means I'm doing spoilery stuff. When I put the book down, I'm done talking about the spoilery stuff. Okay? Okay. Here is my guess. Because like I said, I don't have any, there really hasn't been any evidence in the book to support said guess. But I am going to predict or guess. Oh God, that's the garbage truck. No! not during my video garbage truck i am going to guess that it is mr ward mr ward is naomi and kara's dad and here's why i'm guessing that as i stated before i am an avid watcher of true crime therefore i am an expert and because of that it's usually an adult man who is taking advantage of little girls he is a teacher and he is a tutor. I think he's possibly tutoring Angie. What's her name? Andy? Andy? He was possibly tutoring Andy and ingratiated her into some shenanigans. And those shenanigans, I think, are drug dealing. I think that he had her selling drugs because they found a drug um, because Sal overdosed on a drug. However, Mr. Ward's wife was sick. So she possibly has some drugs left over and maybe he was selling, maybe he had a homegirl selling drugs for him and that's how she was getting all this extra money. So that's guess number one. Mr. Ward was not at work on Tuesday, which was when Sal's body was found. He called in sick, which means that he had opportunity. Uh, and possibly no alibi. Motive. Motive is important. The only motive I could come up with is that because Andrea is a bit of an asshole, she was blackmailing Mr. Ward. Because maybe he didn't have any more drugs. Maybe he didn't want to sell it anymore. Maybe he had a conscience. I don't know. Maybe his daughter found out. I don't know. Maybe he grew a conscience. Andrea was like, oh, hell no. I need some Monte. So she was blackmailing him. Was like, if you do not do what I say, if we do not continue our little scheme then I'm going to tell everyone because I have proof. He was probably like, hey, I don't want to do this anymore. She's an asshole. Maybe he accidentally kills her because he hit her or something. Those are my predictions. If I'm correct, I need a reward. What should my reward be? Time to go to work. And I'm at work. Today, I will be hopefully finishing up the Christie Affair. I'm on two speed now. Fingers crossed I finished that gem. And I will also be changing my book displays because it is 
no longer an API month. It is now Pride Month. I will be putting some LGBTQ plus books out on the shelf and on my horrible excuse of a display. So that is the day of a teen librarian. I know it's like that ain't enough to do in a whole day. I don't sit behind a reference desk so I don't have people coming up asking me for books, finding books or anything like that. Uh, but it is summer reading. Teens are out of school so we might have teens coming in and out of the room. But no, it probably isn't enough to fill my day. But I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. That's all I can promise. See you later. Okay, so I'm on page like 160, 170 of The Christie Affair. And this book is, it makes no sense. Our main character, Nan, is making some really weird decisions. And of course, I'm not going to say because it's a spoiler, but if you read the book, you know what I'm talking about. Like, I'm at the part where Agatha has been found and she goes to a house and then Nan also goes to the house. It is weird, the decision she makes. I don't, I don't understand. I am not enjoying this book at all. Nan, the mistress, is reading The Great Gatsby. And I'm thinking that the author is trying to draw some parallels between The Great Gatsby and the characters in Christie, the Christie affair. So, so far that's the only thing that's making this book good is the parallels between it and The Great Gatsby, which I enjoyed in high school, by the way. And I still remember because we talked about that book to death. Oh my God, I still remember everything about The Great Gatsby, it's disgusting. I don't remember anything else about high school, but I remember The Great Gatsby.
done with yeah. Christie Affair. I just finished it. And it went like this. There was a moment where I was like, ooh, I'm intrigued. And then there was a moment when I was like, what the hell is that? And unfortunately, the what the hell is that brought it back down to a 3.5 and not a 4. Overall, I thought it was a really cool idea to come up with your own story for what happened to Agatha in those 11 days that she went missing or that she left. I like the idea of another of the other woman being part of the cause for it. The problem was the other woman. I wish she had been a better written character. Nan was kind of vanilla. There are so many different ways she could have been written. So many different fabulously interesting, intriguing ways, yet she's super duper vanilla. There's nothing wrong with vanilla. Vanilla can be delicious. I personally don't like vanilla unless there's chocolate syrup on it, but that's me. Many people like vanilla. Can we get some sprinkles or a cherry on top? You know, something. She did not have a cherry or some sprinkles. So. And the book really hinges on her because it's about her. And so if she isn't fabulous, then what else is there? Nothing, that's why I gave it a three and a half. Uh. So Ashley and I will be doing this for the podcast in a couple of weeks. Look out for it. We podcast at the Novel Universe Podcast and we will have a better discussion about the Christie. I keep wanting to call it the Christie Project. It's not the Mindy Project, Dawn. It's the Christie Project. Oh my God, it's the Christie Affair. All right. I'm done. My day is done. My day is done. It. I'm. Well, I'm not going home yet. I have a couple of hours, but this vlog is done because I'm done reading my book. So, see you tomorrow. Is that poo or is it slime? It's slime. <laughs>
she sounds like Nancy Drew, which I'm not mad at. It's kind of, it's actually kind of cool because, you know, Pip is a sleuth, a detective, so is Nancy Drew. It all works. I'm almost done. I think I'm still right though. I was right, motherfuckers. <laughs> I was right. Uh, my, well, I was mostly right. I had the murder correct and I had their motive almost correct. Pretty, pretty close. I had a couple things off, but I'm gonna call that a, a win. I, I got that right. Uh, overall, I really did enjoy the book. I thought that it was very well paced. I liked all the characters. Uh, my only complaint is that some of the things that Peppa was doing was incredibly unrealistic. Uh, and that ending was redonkulous. And that would never fly in an adult thriller mystery. But I think it goes okay for a teen book because you got to entertain the teens. I think this was entertaining. This is an entertaining ending for the teens. So I'm not going to be mad at it. I'm not going to like knock it too badly. I will be reading the subsequent books because I did like the characters. I did like the writing style and I'm interested to see what, what happens next. All right. That is the end of this week's vlog. Thank you for joining me this week. I will catch you next week with a new work week and a new book. Bye.